Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking. World in state of crisis, says India's PM Modi at Global South Summit. Pakistan to take fiscal measures set by IMF to meet budgetary targets. And Prime Minister Hasina says will build a smart Bangladesh by 2041 if voted to power. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday addressing the Global South Virtual Summit said that the world is in a state of crisis and it is difficult to predict how long this will last as he dwelled on various global challenges arising out of conflict, terrorism and the Russia-Ukraine war. India is hosting the two-day summit to bring together countries of Asia, Africa and South America as part of its G20 presidency. The world is in a state of crisis and it is difficult to predict how long this state of instability will last. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said on Thursday at the Voice of Global South Virtual Summit as he stressed the need for the Global South to escape the cycle of dependency on systems and circumstances which are not of its making. The Global South largely refers to countries in Asia, Africa and South America. PM Modi said most of the global challenges have not been created by the Global South but they affect us more as he flagged concerns over rising prices of food and fuel and economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and climate change. He also said that in the 21st century, global growth will come from countries of the South, adding that need of the R is to identify simple, scalable and sustainable solutions that can transform societies and economies. Global growth will come from countries of the South. I think that if we work together, we can set the global agenda. India is hosting the two-day summit as part of its G20 presidency agenda to provide countries of the global South a common platform to share their concerns relating to various global challenges. Indian Army Chief General Manoj Pandey on Thursday said the situation along the line of actual control with China is stable but remains unpredictable. Without naming China, he said Indian forces have been able to prevent all attempts to change the status quo along the border in a robust manner. The remarks came almost a month after clashes between Indian and Chinese troops were reported in the Tawang region. Indian Army Chief General Manoj Pandey on Thursday said that the situation at the line of actual control, LAC, bordering China is stable and under control, yet unpredictable. The comments from the Army Chief came during his address at the annual Army Day press conference. Commenting over the border tussle, he said five of the seven thorny issues between the two forces was presented on table and resolved. Talking over Chinese deployments along the border, he said there is a slight increase in number of Chinese troops near LAC, with India continuing to monitor the movement. Our preparedness is of very high level and we have enough reserves to deal with any contingency, General Pandey added. And I shall take the northern borders first. I would say the situation is stable and under control, yet unpredictable. You are aware of the talks, ongoing talks, wherein we have been able to resolve five out of the seven issues that were on the table. And uh, we are continuing to talk both at the diplomatic as well as the military level. India and China in December last year clashed near Tawang in Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh. This was the first such incident after the two Asian giants engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat in 2020 in Galwan Valley of India's Union Territory of Ladakh. The 2020 incident has kept the bilateral relations between Beijing and New Delhi uneasy. 
In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's finance minister Ishaq Dar on Wednesday said that Pakistan will take fiscal measures set by the IMF to meet its budgetary targets for the current financial year. The remarks came after Dar's meeting with IMF representatives in Geneva earlier this week. The ninth review for an IMF bailout program for Pakistan is pending since September last year. Pakistan's Finance Minister Ishak Dar on Wednesday said Pakistan will take fiscal measures set by the International Monetary Fund IMF to meet its budgetary targets for the 2022-23 financial year. These measures included reviewing subsidies in the farming and export sectors and shedding energy sector debt. Dar during a presser alongside PM Shahbaz Sharif said that a detailed discussion had taken place with the IMF on the sidelines of the UN-Pakistan donor conference in Geneva, where the global lender had emphasized a need to take the fiscal measures. A ninth IMF review to clear the release of the next tranche of funds to Pakistan has been pending since September, as the country faces a severe economic crisis, with its central bank foreign reserves falling to a critical level of below $5 billion, barely enough for three months of imports. But on the safe side, they think that we will also फिसकल में ये लेने नहीं चाहिए कुछ हमने जो अन बजटेड अगर को सब्सिडीज हैं को थोड़ा सा किसान पैकेज में है एक एक्सपोर्टर्स को हमने दिया था उसके लिए हमने ऑलरेडी एडेंटिफाई किए हैं फॉर यू इनफॉरमेशन फिसकल कोई हम लेंगे लेकिन किसी कॉमन मैन के ऊपर आम इंसान के ऊपर किसी आम शहरी के ऊपर उसका कोई बोझ नहीं होगा इट विल वेरी टारगेटेड एंड वेरी कैटेगोरिक Meanwhile, the World Economic Forum in its global risk report on Wednesday said that Pakistan is facing simultaneous food and debt crisis, which can turn into a catastrophic scenario due to extreme weather events and constrained supply. This can also turn the energy crisis towards a humanitarian crisis, the report stated. The document suggests state collapse, interstate conflict and terrorist attacks among the top 10 risks Pakistan will face in next two years. Moving on, hundreds of temporary female health workers have continued to stage protest in Gilgit Baltistan against suspension of their appointments. They said despite qualifying for the jobs, their appointments were suspended due to corruption in the process. Despite harsh cold weather, scores of temporary female health workers in Gilgit Baltistan have continued to stage protests against suspension of their appointments. The protesters said that they passed a test and interview and qualified for over 600 temporary posts in the health department last November, but blamed the appointments were suspended as Gilgit Baltistan Chief Minister Khalid Khurshid Khan along with others wanted to appoint their own candidates on the posts. It is unfair to deny them jobs, they said. कि हम जो है अपने हक के लिए यहाँ पे आए हैं और हम तब तक यहाँ से नहीं जाएंगे जब तक हमारे स्टे खत्म नहीं करके हमें जो है ज्वाइनिंग देने का हुकुम नहीं देते तो इस वजह से वजीरे आला से हम अपील करते हैं लेकिन इन लोगों को इतना भी एहसास नहीं है यहाँ पे जितनी खातन आई हैं इन्होंने अपने साथ छोटे छोटे बच्चों को भी इधर लेके आए हुए हैं इस सर्दी के मौसम में बिल्कुल इनको एहसास ही नहीं है सी साहब से हमारी रिक्वेस्ट है कि आप हमारे इस मसले को हल करें हम Locals claim while Pakistan repeatedly turns a blind eye to the problems of the people in the illegally occupied region, the few government jobs for deserving candidates are also lost due to corruption and exploitation. In news from Bangladesh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Wednesday told the parliament that a vision is to transform the country into smart Bangladesh by 2041. She said as the first step towards this journey, Bangladesh has become a developing country from the least developed country. The remarks came as Bangladesh is expected to hold election later this year. Bangladesh's Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Wednesday told the parliament that her party, Bangladesh Awami League's vision is to transform every village into a township alongside building the country as smart Bangladesh by 2041. Hasina, who is also the leader of the house, said the Awami League's election manifesto of 2018, Bangladesh on the journey to prosperity, outlined plans for building a prosperous and developed Bangladesh by 2041 and a safe delta by the year 2100. She said, in order to materialize the vision, different short, medium and long-term plans will be taken in the near future. 
As a first step in this journey, Bangladesh has become a developing country from the least developed country, she added. Hasina said production of digital devices would be increased and the local market for the devices would be expanded by increasing the purchasing power of the people alongside finding new overseas markets for the items. Citing IMF statistics, Canada-based online publication Visual Capitalist recently stated in a report that Bangladesh has emerged as the 35th largest economy in the world. The rating was given in terms of gross domestic product. With Bangladesh to undergo general election by year-end, these projections are expected to give Sheikh Hasina a consecutive fourth term. And in news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's Foreign Ministry on Wednesday summoned Canada's top diplomat and expressed its displeasure over his country's decision to impose unilateral sanctions on four Sri Lankan individuals, including two former presidents. The sanctions came over human rights violations during the armed conflict in Sri Lanka from 1983 to 2009. Sri Lanka's Foreign Ministry on Wednesday summoned Canada's top diplomat Daniel Boud and expressed displeasure over his country's decision to impose unilateral sanctions on four Lankan citizens, including former presidents Gotabaya Rajapaksa and Mahinda Rajapaksa. The sanctions came over human rights violations during the armed conflict in Sri Lanka from 1983 to 2009. The Sri Lankan Foreign Ministry said that such unilateral action by the Canadian government sets a dangerous precedent and is inimical to Sri Lanka's interests. Canadian Foreign Minister Melanie Jolly on Tuesday in a statement said that the people of Sri Lanka have suffered a great deal due to the armed conflict, economic and political instability and gross violations of human rights. Colombo has asked Canada to review the decision. This is the first time that the Rajapaksa brothers have been banned by any country despite long-held accusations of rights abuse and corruption. Gotabaya temporarily fled his country last summer after mass protests over the country's economic crisis, while Mahinda resigned from his post as Prime Minister last spring. Notably, Sri Lanka's majority Sinhalese population had praised the brothers for defeating Tamil separatists after a 26-year-long civil war. Rights groups, however, accused the army of killing at least 40,000 civilians in the final months of the conflict. And as electric vehicles hogged the limelight, on the first day of India's flagship motor show Auto Expo 2023, an Indian startup on Wednesday unveiled the country's first solar-powered electric car at the event. Eva, a two-seater smart car, has solar panels on its roof that can charge the vehicle apart from a battery pack. Have a look. An Indian startup unveiled the country's first solar-powered electric car at Auto Expo 2023 on Wednesday. As car makers in one of the world's fastest-growing auto markets take a deep dive into zero-emission vehicles, Eva, a two-seater smart car, has solar panels on its roof that can charge the vehicle apart from a battery pack and was introduced at the Biennial Car Show in northern Greater Noida City. The solar panels on the car can charge up to 3,000 km per year or 10 km per day. The startup Wave Mobility intends to bring the compact car that weighs 500 kg into the market in the next 18 months. A really unique thing about this car is it is India's first solar vehicle. So what we have done is we have been able to achieve a design for the vehicle which is the right size of weight and size of vehicle that is giving us solar power to run the vehicle. And with this, with this particular car, we are able to get 10 kilometers of range every day on an Indian climate condition. That comes up to almost 3,000 kilometers of range for a whole year, which for many people is about one third of what they need for their whole requirements for the year. The clean vehicle push comes at a time when the Indian government is looking to cut emissions and pollution in major cities while also reducing its oil import bill. India is offering companies millions of dollars in incentives to build electric vehicles and their parts locally. Firms from Hyundai Motor to Saic Motor, BYD and Tata Motors also unveiled their electric cars on the first day. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.